again. Fancy seeing you here. So, you're wanting to know how to make even more robots for world domination? Hmm. I think we can do that. So welcome back to my sci-fi lab. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make 10 more sci-fi robots for world domination. Now, this is the second robot video of a series, so make sure you go and check out 15 sci-fi robot builds for your Minecraft world. Which I'll leave a link to up in the top corner right about now. There we go. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video, shall we? The EN5000, aka the Powered Workloader. Yes, kicking us off at number one is the EN5000 Powered Workloader. Now, this particular robot mech was inspired by Alien and was suggested by one of you viewers. It was suggested by Matty Pixel. I think that's right. Uh, apologies if I got that wrong. I'm pretty sure that's correct, though. Uh, and this was a design that I came up with over on Acapara, which is one of our build servers. Super happy with how it came out. So we have our little area here where we can stand inside. So we just jump inside here. There we go. And this is where you would stand and control the device. Very, very cool. So in the EN5000, we're using a bunch of polished andesite as well as a bunch of blast furnaces. Lots and lots of deep slate. And of course, our red sandstone and a bunch of acacia for trimmings like the signs and the fence gates. And of course, the trapdoors, which we cannot build without apparently and then around the back we have our tank we've got a couple of custom heads up here we have some exhausts and some extractor fans and don't forget links to all of the heads will be available down in the description below as well as the world download for this so there you go now the em5000 was the inspiration for this entire video so thank you to matty pixel for suggesting i build this a few months ago uh very fun and a very very cool build and there we are, that is the EN5000 Powered Workloader. The ENX5250, aka the Auroc. So the ENX5250, aka the Auroc, is a follow-on to the EN5000. As you can see, it is also a powered workloading machine. But unlike the EN5000, it has a closed cockpit. So you get into it via this section here. There we go. And now we're inside the machine. Ha ha! And the reason it has this closed cockpit is to give a better working environment to the pilot of this machine. So the inside can be nicely air cooled and stuff because this is for going deep down into the ground and lifting up massive huge rocks and stuff. Uh, around the back we have a couple of extractor fans as well as a big exhaust thank you to the blast furnace for doing a lot of the heavy lifting there and then round the sides to make up the arms we're using again deep slates and grindstones and chains and some iron bars to create these lovely pincer arms and that is the ENX 5250 the EN 3250 aka the cretin so the EN3250 aka the Cretin is another one of our powered workloaders. So you may recognize this. This is the one that was in the intro for this very video where it ripped a tree out of the ground. Uh, it is much like the other previous two. However, it also has this enclosed cockpit and it has two headlamps on the front so it can work down in the dark much more easily. It has much, much bigger legs and claws so it can grab much larger things. It's kind of great for building and clearing out. That's the idea behind this particular robot mech is that you get inside it or you radio control it and you lift things that you necessarily wouldn't want to lift. Now we're using a bunch of different blocks to make up the cretin. So we have some observers there and some acacia trapdoors. We're also using a ton of polished andesite and blast furnaces, levers, end rods, lightning rods, and of course, all of our deep slate and our signature smooth red sandstone because we can't have a build without it. And around the back, we again have two of our extractor fans and two of our exhaust units so that we can pump out any of those nasty fumes from inside the cockpit and the engines. Now the EN3250 is one of my favorite robot mechs and it's mostly because of these arms. So unlike most of my robot designs, I decided to give them these sort of almost pauldron-esque upper parts to their arms. 
and it kind of made it very dwarven and squat looking and I really really love that. I'm very very happy with this one. I mean obviously it's the one that I featured in the intro. It makes perfect sense. The ENX0088 aka the Rufus. So the ENX0088 aka the Rufus is a utility robot mech. Uh, so as you can see we have a claw here on its left arm and on the right we have some sort of blasting gun and I imagine that this goes down and blasts huge chunks of rocks from inside deep cavernous walls and then grabs them and hurls them back behind it to be loaded and taken up to the surface. So we have this very very squat design for the Rufus to make sure that it can get enough head clearance when it's down in the caves as well as our two headlights on the front. We have our signal on the back and then we have our exhausts and of course our extractor fans. Now you may be wondering why this robot is called the Rufus and actually uh, I don't know. See this robot and a few other robots in today's video weren't actually named by me but were named by one of my fellow randoms Lag Monster. So uh, thank you Lag for naming this the Rufus. Don't know why you did it. So if you want to check out Lag Monster's videos, there will be a link down in the description and I'll also pull a link up on screen right now. There we go. The EN2090 aka The Decimator. Now taking a break away from our utility and mining robots, we have the EN2090 aka The Decimator. Now, as you can tell, this is not a mining or utility robot. This robot is built for one thing and one thing alone. And that thing is pain. So we have these two huge twin rotating guns mounted on either side of its cockpit, which you could leave as a manned cockpit, or you could put a couple of eyes in there and turn it into a full-fledged robot. Now, some of you may recognize the name for the EN2090, as well as the look and have thought, hmm, where did you get the inspiration for that from? Well, the inspiration for the EN2090 comes from the ED209 from the original Robocop movie, which, uh, as a child, uh, really scared me. Uh, thanks, mum and dad, for letting me watch that as a child. Um, yeah, therapy. It's a hell of a thing. But if for some reason you have watched the original Robocop, just like I have, you will recognize that these legs are a lot longer. And that is because the ED209 famously falls down the stairs uh, and can't get back up uh, because it doesn't have the leg span to do so. So we have given the EN2090 a longer set of legs. We also have a tanker at the back as well as a couple of jets so we could like lift its legs up and fly forwards. That's the idea behind that. And of course, our little cockpit. So that is the EN2090, AKA the Decimator. Hey, future Enigma here. Now, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to drop it a like and consider subscribing and punch that notification bell. Even Derp can manage it. There's no excuse. Okay, let's get back to the video, shall we? The ENX8050, AKA the Chief. So this is the ENX8050, also known as the Chief. So the Chief is another one of our large hauling mech robots. As you can see, it is the largest one of its type, hence his name, the Chief. So like the rest of our ENX standard robots, we are using our oxidized copper as well as some warp planks and some warped trapdoors so we get this nice green look which is a much more elite coloring than the EN models and around the back we have these twin tanks for holding fuel and then we have these large oversized claws so unlike our other utility haulage robot mech suits that we have shown in this showcase this one is definitely one that's more for the surface not for downing mines and caves and so on this would be for taking heavy engine parts to and from large machinery. So we have these extremely large oversized claws, twin tanks at the back, and of course our closed cockpit as is standard on the ENX models. And that is the ENX 8050. The EN1550 aka the Goliath. Sometimes you just have too much to move and that is where the EN1550 aka the Goliath comes in. 
We have these large claws, not the largest, but they are definitely somewhat substantial. And then round the back, we have these huge two twin jet engines so that this robot can not only move things on the ground, but through the air. So as you can see, we have these extremely large hips, which can rotate and come backwards and the legs can flip up and become tail fins so that this thing can soar through the air. So unlike all of the other utility bots, the Goliath can get anywhere at any point. Now, just like the Chief, the Goliath is not built for going deep under the ground. It is built for soaring up through the skies and traversing difficult terrain once it lands. So we have these extremely long legs with oversized feet at the bottom with a retracting rear claw, as well as, of course, our twin jets for soaring through the sky. We then have these really nice little claws. They're not massive, they're not the biggest, but you could swap them out for the large oversized claws. And I actually intend to do just that. So in a few weeks, if you follow me over on Kofi or you're a member on my Discord, which there'll be a link for down in the description below, you'll be able to get your hands on an entire robot parts list. So you'll be able to mix and match different hulls, different legs and different arms together using Lightmatica. So to make sure you don't miss out, be sure to check the description below and either follow me on Kofi or better yet, join my Discord. It's new. The ENX850 aka the titan of course it's not all just about moving things around and building things sometimes we just want to destroy stuff and when you do and the decimator's not quite enough for you there is the enx 850 also known as the titan now the titan similar to the decimator it has these two big twin rotating guns but unlike the decimator we also have two top mounted rail guns to blast the enemy to smithereens we have these large oversized legs again with a retractable rear claw so we can pincer in onto different environments and two huge twin engines on the back so that the titan can take to the air for aerial combat which is key if you're wanting to dominate the world and of course we have our enclosed cockpit so you can soar through the heavens safely and rain down terror from above. And that is the Titan. The EN-1050 aka the Scudder. Now with so many robots wandering around your world you're going to need something to monitor them with and that is where the EN-1050 aka the Scudder comes in. So this is a big drone for monitoring and keeping track of all of the robots around your service area as you can see we have multiple relay units up on the top we have a large windowed eye so it can send down a beam of hatred on all of the other robots and then we have our four big vertical jet engines which can rotate so it can fly in any direction it needs to as well as being able to keep the statistics of all of our robots this thing can also send down chains and pick up and move our robots around which is kind of useful if you're wanting to get from a to b rapidly via the air and you don't have one with jet engines so the en1050 is actually a modified version of the big boy ship that i showcased in my ships build showcase which i'll leave a link for up on the screen right about now there it is and if you'd be interested in seeing more flying robots, let me know down in the comments below, and maybe I will do one in the very near future. The ENX-1010, aka the Grappler. Now, if you really want to grab things, I have the perfect robot for you. This is the ENX-1010, aka the Grappler. Now, this is a big floating meatball esque robot as you can see by its central part and it sort of floats through the air and has these giant oversized gorilla-esque arms and these giant hands for grabbing things now this was in actually inspired by again one of the robots that dr robotnik uses in the sonic series and i really liked the idea of challenging myself to do 
pans in the scale that I normally build at. So we're using some anvils and some stairs, a few more anvils to get the fingertips at the bottom. And then we have this thumb where we're using a wall and a couple of stairs to get the shaping in. And then for the top of the hand, we're using two sets of stairs so we can get this all palm shape in underneath and some trapdoors and some carpet. And then that goes up to these large oversized arms. Again, it has this similar sort of pauldron-esque design that we used on the cretin. And then we have our central cockpit area, which you can, of course, get inside uh, via this bit here. So we can just plop. There we go. And then stand up here. And there we are. We're inside of the grappler. Now, the grappler is probably one of my favorite robots. I kind of picture them being used as like boxing mech robots in like a futuristic sci-fi setting where they sort of punch each other and sort of almost like robot sumo or robot judo. Uh, and yeah, that is the ENX 1010, a.k.a. the grappler. So there you have it. 10 more sci-fi robots for your world domination. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing because that helps me out a ton. And if you want to get your hands on any of these beautiful robots, a link will be down in the description down there. Yep, there it is. There, there you go. There's a little, little thing there on the screen. Uh, yeah, just go down to the description. It's down there. And don't forget to let me know which one of these is your favorite robot down in the comments as well, because I am interested to know which one of these you would most like to build. And maybe I'll make a build tutorial for it. Now, I have some more world domineering to do. So until next time, Enigma out.